podcast on Smooth 98.1. <laughs> Mics are up. And a very good morning to you, Lagos, and thank you very much for staying with us. You are listening to the Smooth 98.1 FM Lagos, and this is Freshly Pressed 91. It uh, brings you a detailed analysis of our news with our stories this morning. And for Monday, the 14th of January 2019, we have Lola. Of where I am. she's at Lola Jewelry on Twitter. She's good joining morning, us again. Lady. Good morning, Lola. So good to have you back. Good to be back. I heard really good stories about you. Oh, you are too kind. And I was always hoping and praying I'll get to meet you, and finally it happened. And you know, I honestly feel like we met before. Yeah, somehow. Just supposed to share I know. Good songs, another good life, songs. maybe. <laughs> uh, Lagos, welcome, Lola, this morning Thanks. as she joins us on Freshly Press 91. And also joining us is Bola Ho at Mr. G Quest himself. Good morning, Valentine, and good morning, Lagos. Good morning to you, Lagos. Remember how to send your messages through to us? Yes, reach out to us on WhatsApp. The number to do that is 0809 Also, we are on Twitter. We are at Smooth981FM. Please use the hashtag FreshlyPress981 to get your messages across as well. Okay, so real quick, uh, once again, it's uh, 0809 for your WhatsApp messages. All right, let's start with a story from the Punch newspaper. INEC produces 2,045 PVCs uh, stolen in Aquivum. Uh, that's according to the resident electoral commissioner in that state, Mr. Mike Igini. He said the 2,045 permanent voters card that was stolen uh, from the Okobo local government area uh, back in 2018, October precisely, they've been recovered. Uh, they had concerted efforts uh, with the police as well to recover these. At a, as at the time that uh, they were stolen, uh, they noted, uh, reminded the public, uh, they shouldn't panic. Uh, the, they had the numbers, the names, and the PIN numbers of the cards. So I guess that's uh, where they got the reprint information from. But take us through the stories, Lola. Um, so basically, uh, we've got the story in the punch. Um, they've said that um, these cards were stolen from somewhere that they've been kept safely for two months. Mm -hmm. uh, and now they're gone. Now what was particularly concerning for me about this story is... Uh, we all know the country that we live in, and we are generally not very good at record keeping. I mean, where is the evidence of the cards that they say that, the, sorry, the information that they say were on these cards? Mm -hmm. How are we show sure? there's a segment in the story that they go on to say maybe not everyone will get the cards because some people have passed on. How do they know? How do they, How they have do this know? information? Where do they get this information from? Where's the census information? They've also gone on to say that already over 1.5. 72 million PVCs have been collected in the state and about 200, almost 300,000 is what's left. Mm. Um, again, I would question that information because as a rule, we are not very good at keeping track of things we have, much less things that we lose. Now, it would be hoped that um, all of this could be sorted out in time. Uh, he said that um, polling places, polling units enable more people to come out to get their PVCs and the exercise will last for about six days from the 16th to the 21st. Now, this is why it's just so important for people to step out and vote this year. It's it's even more precedent now than ever, because if we're getting stories like this already, you don't want to start wondering about later on having to hear stories about, oh, you know, um, uh, unregistered voters. Mm -hmm. People start to claim different things, and mm -hmm. we just hope that this doesn't usher any kind of uh, disturbance in a private one. Yeah, or disenfranchisement in some sense. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much, Lola. Let's move on uh, very quickly to this next story for you, Balahal. Insecurity, postpone elections in Borno, Katsina, Zamfara State. Lawyers urge INEC, and that's coming from New Telegraph. So a number of lawyers are calling on the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to postpone the conduct of general elections in these states, that's Katsina, Borno, and other states where they're experiencing high levels of security, says the fundamental right of every citizen of Nigeria, we know this, to vote. So if their rights is threatened, then why go ahead with elections? But they also noted something really important. They said that it, INEC would have that um, constitutional power to actually mm -hmm. postpone the elections mm -hmm. if there's a state of emergency declared mm -hmm. in such states. Mm -hmm. well, what are your thoughts on this? Well, you know, this actually, this story actually stems from the fact that a few weeks ago we noticed that the governors of these um, states, especially Bonum states, went uh, to meet the president and appealed for extra measures to be taken in ensuring that there's uh, adequate security. And mm -hmm. some were even asking for a state of emergency mm -hmm. as well, too. And With, which, in tears. Exactly. Oh. And he was in tears as well, too, mm -hmm. which will invariably mean that they're abdicating responsibility. That's the governors. And then giving the federal government uh, the autonomy to run the states or so. So 
Now, this uh, issue has been raised by the lawyers um, saying that, of course, the election should be cancelled or postponed in those states. Mm. And the reason for it is, of course, not far-fetched. If you're not able to secure the lives of the people that will be partaking in the election, you're not able to secure the lives of the observers and also the INEC officials as well too. Uh, uh, during that process, then how do you guarantee a free and fair election? Mm, but so, remember that INEC has said multiple times that these elections will not be postponed uh, in any centre at all through the country. Even the former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Melissa Bakuba, insisted the election should not be postponed. He said uh, that there were worse insurgencies or insurgent uh, actions under Jonathan under the past administration. Uh, you know, and elections I, were held in such I, hot spots as well. I, I, I do agree, absolutely. But where, where, where I'm going is, you know, what we should be looking out for is that they do have a valid point, mm. and the points raised are very valid. Of course, you have to be able to ensure that you secure the lives of those that are going to be voting. And of course, we did have this incident. It's been ongoing now for quite a while. I mean, the insurgency. Mm. And it was worse in 2015. But let's not forget that, of course, in 2015 as well, too, the elections were actually postponed. And then the military actually had more firepower to suppress the insurgency at that point they in time. More firepower then? They did then yeah. at that point in time. Yes, remember in 2015 then, I'm, I'm what happened then was that, of course, uh, the South African mercenaries were invited then. You remember the elections were actually postponed there and they came in there and they suppressed Boko Haram to some extent. And so, of course, there was a lot more security. Uh, within that election period. Mm -hmm. So we just have to ensure that, I mean, the lives of properties and people are actually secured before going ahead with the election. All That's right. what is paramount. Thank you very much, Bola. Let's move on uh, to this next story, but a quick reminder here that you can send me your messages with your comments, <clears throat> excuse me, comments and observations to these stories to our WhatsApp number 0809 from Guardian newspaper, I'll come to you, Lola, with this story. The headline reads, Niger Delta agitators threaten attacks over Onogan's ordeal. And it's talking about the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Um, he's uh, a bill to face trial at the Criminal um, Code of Conduct Tribunal today, uh, January 14th. And he's uh, facing a six-count charge uh, you know, of alleged false declaration of assets. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so this one is a story that we've been, well, in my house, we've been monitoring for a second because mm. at this crucial time leading up to elections, it's very interesting the position that the federal government has taken to bring charges against uh, the, um, the CGN now. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's just um, a strange charge. And, and ironically, if you look at what the reason behind the charges are, they said, okay, he declared assets in 2014 and 2015 at the same time. Mm. Now, he's come out to explain that the reason he did that was because he noticed a discrepancy himself and then he came forward and picked up on it and came forward mm. um, with the information. The discrepancies are between, he first declared two uh, accounts, one with uh, both with Union Bank, uh, for about 9 million and 11 million and then further on in 2015 mm. uh, he added five more accounts including standard chartered and of course vast sums of money are included I'm not going to go into that Lagos but mm -hmm. you can just imagine mm -hmm. now on the one hand we've got to consider yes the government does have a right to point this out it's not standard it's not what should be done mm. But we live in a country where very little is done as it should be done. Yes. We now have to look to the further motive of why this is being done right now. And the timing. And the timing. Mm -hmm. It's it's um it's concerning because um according to um pardon me, sorry, I had to go back to my notes. Mm -hmm. According to a, a ruling that is now currently in the Court of Appeal, uh a petition has to first been be filed to remove the judge. You, you shouldn't actually be bringing him forth for disciplinary action or for investiga investigatory action at this time. Mm -hmm. First, you have to petition to remove the judge from office. It's, it's um, what, what, however, is concerning to me, and yes, fine, the law is being bent a little bit. What is concerning for me right now is I'm wondering what's going to end up happening if he decides not to show up in court today. Mm -hmm. If he decides to listen to um, the people who are saying things like, oh, you know, and, and particularly because... Uh, governors are coming up to stand up for him. Mm -hmm. SANs are coming up to stand up for him and saying, "Ignore it." Now, besides, at, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Patricia, but sure. besides, there's a there's a school of thought that I mean, standard practice that, like you pointed out, there's a, a judiciary system. There's a judiciary body that they already answer to in first. Place. Already in place. So if those ones are not questioning him at this point, why is the federal government now superseding their ruling or their powers, you know, to go ahead to 
you know, go after him like this. Well, I, 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 I'd just like to add to this conversation anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I think this similar incident has happened about a few years, or just a year ago, so where the uh, where we had the judges being arrested yeah, exactly. uh, for all sorts of uh, corruption practices exactly. or so, alleged and it was corruption. alleged exactly, mm -hmm. and it was raised then that of course the standard procedure is actually to put them forward uh, through the Nigerian Judiciary Council first, yes, NGC, yes. before, uh, and it's after they've been dismissed mm -hmm. that you can now arrest and then prosecute mm. afterwards right. so of course uh, it, it seems as if the government is actually jumping the gun at this yes. present moment but and unfortunately mm. at this particular time you see the cjn plays such a vital role mm. in the electoral process mm. you don't want to have any situation of where it's, it's now become a partisan issue mm. where people are now saying oh yes it's because he doesn't like this particular party or that particular person mm. that throws far too much mud into an atmosphere that really does need to be as transparent as possible. All right, so for avoidance of staining yourself with your shirt, should you not swim in the mud to get things sorted out? Because, and, and that I mean, is the problem. And looking at the position of the CJN, I mean, should he be exonerated for, for such accusations if he's found guilty just because of his position and his power? Well, you see, that's the thing. You hold we hold the judiciary to such a high standard mm. and we hold them to such a high moral code that he's actually come out and said look this is the reason for the discrepancy he said that um he had these accounts opened in the time in between now whether that's true or not i suppose that should be up to the, judici the judiciary body that is put over them yes. that is actually set up to oversee yes that yes. but not at this stage i'm, I'm not entirely sure that this is, uh, is, I, I it, it, it's, it's a little too wrong. suspicious it's a little felix i am sent in a message on whatsapp regarding this he said the trial of the chief justice of nigeria should not be politicized by any chance he should be made to face the law to prove his innocence the niger delta body should not be used to divert justice in the united states the president had been undergoing investigations since the inception of his administration mm. As a case in point where we're in Nigeria and we need to follow this story. Comfort from Eric Moore sent in a message as well. It says, this is a classic case of the executive trying to intimidate the judiciary. Uh, there are uh, plenty of comas in this in this matter, especially the timing of the entire circumstance. As far as PMB is concerned, the Shibajo is good enough to debate on his behalf and not qualified to appoint Chief Justice, but not qualified to appoint Chief Justice of Nigeria. Exactly. I would have pointed that out because earlier on in the story, they also made a point of saying this... Um, decision to appoint him was made while the president was out yeah. of town so it's that you are either flouting that you have absolutely no faith in your vice president mm. or that you are now trying to review the decision for which we would actually have to ask you why so, what i would try to say um also this issue is now about to become one where violence starts to creep into our electoral system where people are threatening to injure other people mm -hmm. or to call to arms mm -hmm. over certain matters if a man is innocent forget the mud that gets thrown at him. It won't stick. Mm. Let's not switch to violence now, people. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move on to this next story here from uh, this day newspaper. C 61 political parties sue INEC over election guidelines. And so it's all about the elections because we're getting very close to it. Uh, so a lot of feathers are ruffled at this point. But the political parties are saying that their premise uh, for uh, seeking the uh, you know this lawsuit against INEC is just because and they feel like it's too short a time to reverse the election guidelines, uh, seeing that INEC is, you know, going forward to implement this rule. But anyway, take us through this, Balaho. Well, um, INEC is, um, for this coming election, anyway, coming up with some new guidelines as to how we're going to be partaking in the electoral process this time around. And uh, one of those guidelines is simply, the, uh, rather than the way the election was conducted in 2011 and 2015, where you had the accreditation done initially between a certain hour say between 8 and 12 uh, noon mm -hmm. then people came back uh, later on to actually do the voting this time around it's just going to be a, uh, simultaneous. a simultaneous process yes. where you would actually do the accreditation and at the same time voting at the same time as mm -hmm. well so all of these moves is just in an effort to ensure that the process is made better or so or we improve on our process which i do believe plus, plus sorry uh, plus it's uh, one of the ways that INEC is looking to curb a vote buying as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're just looking at ways of improving the system or so, which I do agree with. Anyway, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with trying to improve the process. But here we go where we have um, certain parties that are not happy with the process or the process of trying to improve mm -hmm. or making an improvement. And they're complaining that what the problem is that they, they've not been carried along. They're talking about, um, they do, 
disagree with certain clauses that have been added to this process as well. And they're also saying that all these processes that have been uh, improved upon is an opportunity for rigging uh, or so. And when I look at the parties that are actually making this complaint, and uh, well, they, they mentioned 61 political parties, I'm amazed, of course, I'm not surprised anyway, we have so many political <laughs> parties that are taking place. I wonder how our ballot papers are going to look like. But I, I, I look at the political parties, we're talking about APP, GPN, yes. RPP, okay. AAPP or so, and so many other political parties. And I'm not seeing the likes of the PDP and you know the major parties complaining about this. Yes, there's strong parties moment. in their own suit, in their own in their own, respect. In their own, so. in their own they, 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 they are. Yes, they are. But these are parties that not a lot of we haven't actually seen a lot of weight behind them we haven't seen a lot of um, campaigns or so but, but is that cause to downplay their demands it, it's not a cause to downplay their demands but i can tell you as well that if there's an issue pdp will be the first <laughs> to raise it up no but it will be can, the I, first. can i play devil's advocate for yes. a second um bearing in mind that typically especially i don't know how it was in your um registration center but mm. we were they, first of all the team doing the work was overtasked mm. um on the, I don't think that they were fully fully put through what they were doing initially, and you could see the volume of people. Mm. We we are a very voluminous nation. So the question now is, if you change the process yes. now, this is just you know devil's advocate here. Instance, yes. If you change the process now, how is that going to affect the staff who have already been trained in the system? Mm -hmm. Granted, it works so so, but mm -hmm. how is that going to ultimately affect the outcome at the end of the day? Are people going to come and say, "Well, I didn't know what to expect. Yes. I, I I got my accreditation and then I left." Where is the talk on the training? Exactly. Exactly. So which is which is uh, where I was getting to as well. To that, what now needs to happen is that. There needs to be a lot more sensitization. There's well. no time. Apart, no time. Uh, four weeks is sufficient, sufficient time to sensitize people. I mean, it's not very tedious to mm -hmm. do. Uh, we need to improve our processes. It, there needs to be an improvement. We cannot keep on doing the same thing and expect a different result all okay. the time. All right, thank you very much, Bolaho and, and Lola. Let's move on to this next story. Our next story comes to you. Uh, this one here is um, from the Punch newspaper, and it comes to you. Lola, it says here, police file charges against uh, Malaya to present uh, eight witnesses. And that story goes, Nigerian police forces filed a charge against Kogi West lawmaker, Senator Dino Malaya, for alleged illegal weapons possession. And uh, well, they're saying that uh, they found a pump action uh, shotgun and 20 cartridges along with uh, where they can present eight persons. Yes, yeah, so um, as we all know, our darling and beloved Uncle Dino is uh, <laughs> still laid up now being held by SS. Mm. SSS, uh, you know, um, it's quite an interesting drama that's unfolding. He's, however, being charged, people tend to forget this, for gun running, which I think is a very serious matter. It's something we always wonder, you know, we're always hearing stories of missing arms and people having arms that shouldn't. Mm -hmm. If this is, if these are genuine charges, and I think that they wouldn't be playing this far out of the line, uh, coloring this far out of the line, if they didn't have something. On ground. Now, they're saying they have eight witnesses, but what I find interesting is that uh, six of the witnesses are policemen mm -hmm. uh two of them were painting ogadino's house okay as oh. at the time oh. when the when the um when they raided his house and what they're claiming they found was a single pump action gun mm. now that does not gun running make and <laughs> if that is the case against him i i don't and i don't see why uncle dino is furthermore yeah. you said they found it uh, at the boys quarters they yeah. found yes <laughs> and they found Premises. it in the BQ. I don't see Uncle Dino hiding a gun. I mean, if he wakes up in the morning, how does he wait under the bed? Anyway, I, I'm running away with the story here, but it, it's just been um, a drama that's long overplayed. I find when our polit political uh, politicians start to dramatize to this extent, mm. there's something there. All right, thank you very much for that one. Let's move on to our next story. This one comes to you, Gwala, and says here, Idris appoints Timibu's ex-CSO, Egbert Okun, as acting Lagos CP. It comes from the Punch newspaper. Your thoughts about this? Yes, well, well we've, we've only just found out uh, recent times now that um, the Inspector General of, uh, of Police has been reshuffling our commissioners of police all around the country without actually even informing people. I mean, it was only just reported just a few, uh, it was last week mm. anyway, that one of the newspapers did actually carry the news that there has been massive redeployment of senior officers across the country from uh, the CPs in Zamfara, Edo, Ekiti, Imo, and Bauchi uh, have been redeployed, redeployed. And in recent times now, we've just found out now that the Lagos State Commissioner of Police, who is a uh, Imohime Edgar has actually been redeployed and he's now meant to be um, 
in charge of explosives and ordinances while they've now brought in a Mr. Coyote Betoko to now act as a acting commissioner of police in Lagos State. And you begin to ask certain questions that why are we having this situation happening at this current time where elections are going to be taking place in about four weeks or exactly. so. Okay. I mean, what's the need for redeploying people uh, under such quick uh, situations without even informing people as well? And when we look at it as well, too, you, I, I, I'm thinking these are things that brings a little bit of doubt and skepticism but in, in the minds of people. Election strategies. What, what election strategies? What, exactly? what election strategies are being carried out that the previous commissioner of police cannot really do? Mm -hmm. I mean, if he wasn't able to do the job, then he shouldn't have put him there. And what's happening to long term and thinking strategically as well to long term? This uh, the the previous commissioner of police was just actually appointed. I think it was about a year ago because I remember it was Fatai uh, Owoshini that was the commissioner of police mm -hmm. uh, uh, at about 2017 yeah. or so. So he's just been redeployed. So why are we talking about bringing somebody new? I mean, it, it raises a lot of questions. And the reason why it raises a lot of questions as well too is that this gentleman who is a new commissioner, acting commissioner of police now, was in charge of a particular, um, it was supervising Ikire town in Oshun State's um, governorship election. And we all know what happened in Oshun State's governorship election. I mean, we were told that a lot of people were sent back, uh, people were actually yeah, allowed to vote. to vote or so, and this was actually things that were done by the police and some certain agencies as well too. So when we look at that, and we also tie it in as well too, that this gentleman also was the chief security officer for the former Lagos State so governor. That's are, you are you suggesting that he's partisan and might be, uh, you know, redeployed purposely I, I, to, to I, sway, uh, sway votes? I'm not saying that. But, you know, when you look at all these little points that have been raised, it raises a little bit of doubt and questions. And people start to wonder what's going on. Why do we have to have this a week before, four weeks before the election? I mean, it raises a lot of questions. And, and we need not create a lot of panic Doubt. or doubts in the mind of people at this time. All right. Uh, pa pa Papi K says, um, it's election time and all angles must be locked down. If we're talking about Janabans, former CSO. And then we have this other one here from, uh, uh, put your name to your messages, all right, please, so we can read them out. And then the, that's from Prince. Prince says, the judgment of the appeal court in the case between federal government uh, versus in Ganjiwa. According to the appellate court, seven judicial officers can only be prosecuted for offenses like murder, stealing, and others if such offenses were committed outside the discharge of their official duties. But once the offense was allegedly uh, committed in the discharge of their duties, then they must be first tried by the Judicial Council, that's the NJC, and dismissed or retried before the FCC can investigate or prosecute them, the court said. The question is, can we say the CJN issue uh, can be categorized under the course of discharging his duty? That is one question. Sure so. mm. And uh, B, B Adeboye says if electoral laws couldn't be amended by the National Assembly due to time constraints, why changing the rules now for the same elections? And same question. Uh, we have this one here from what's your name? Uh, and, and it says, uh, Good morning, Valentine Golaho, my darling Lola De uh, Here's my take on the issue of changing election strategy and sensitization. Sensitizing Nigerians isn't an easy task. I, I train people on a daily basis and they'll definitely make mistakes. Four weeks looks like a long time to get it right, but truth be told, having the, the all African time Ooh. and people's educational background, I would say, live it with what we know and are managing people. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's get to our next story. And this one here comes to you, Lonely. It says here from the Guardian newspaper, US Europe uh, may stop giving visas to Nigerian elites. Politicians from to, uh, tomorrow, which is today, uh, says in Guinea, and that will give you an insight. It says the United States of America and European countries may, with effect from tomorrow, stop issuance of visas to prominent Nigerians, elites, and politicians. Uh, this is the residence electoral commissioner, Akwaibom, saying this. And uh, they're talking about the fact that uh, the elites are, you know, the ones that can actually stay Influence elections. Yeah. Okay. So basically, let's just start out by saying he says may. This is a report coming from um, the resident electoral commissioner. He's, it's a recommendation he has made to these countries to um, ban uh, politicians and Nigerian elites. And, and I want to, you know, raise the question because it's a valid point that he's making. Mm. We've always suspected and stated for years, if somebody with money is mm. the person that pays people mm. to cause violence, to cause, dis uh, cause disruption. And uh, the last thing we need at, right now is anyone who has that in mind to be encouraged to um, start a fire, start trouble in Nigeria and run away. 
during election season. We all know. Um, but over the last couple of years, we've been seeing investors pulling out closer we get to elections because everyone knows how violent and turbulent it gets. Now, the international eye is upon us. It's not a good time for us to show that as a people, as Africans, we cannot make a consensus on simple things such as just getting to and the right to choose. Mm -hmm. It's really come down to that. Now, um, he does go on to say... Um, you know, his, his issue, his particular issue is that uh, people who are recruiting thugs and piling up money to buy votes, um, if that's your problem, then identify certain people. That's what the police is for. That's what investigations are for. Thank Essentially, you. what you're doing is you're sort of like on the back end trying to block the bottom half of the Coke bottle without capping it at the top. It mm. doesn't really help. What Sending the international bodies to block our politicians who exactly is the nigerian elite mm. is there a cap on is there a bank statement you're going to produce that's going to say you know ne is nigerian elite is, is there, there is there a credit card is there exactly and that is where we cross over into the lines of persecution and people will eventually end up having greater issue with that mm. than they do with this idea of blocking politicians i don't have a problem with asking our politicians to be within the country at this crucial time that's not the issue but that should be a mandate that we take on as our people not inviting the world mm. to basically police us yes yeah. we'll have security agencies to tackle that all right uh, i will have story here comes to you well now it says here nia to eliminate fake insurance certificates with us ssd code and this comes from the vanguard newspaper can you take us through this well the nia uh, who is the nigerian insurance association has um just launched a new USSD code, which is a star five six five star one one hash, and the purpose of that USSD code is just to verify your insurance policies or so. So whenever you have a new insurance policy that has just been drafted, you should you should be able to verify the authenticity mm -hmm. of the, of this. Uh, by dialing that number or something. Almost so similar to the way NAFDA gives us the verification exactly, process. For exactly. Or BVN. Yes. Exactly. Or, you, or, or BVN. Or BVN as well. So you can verify all of that as well too. And of course, this is just to, to stem the uh, fake policies that are being generated by the middlemen and mm -hmm. um, the Oluwalis that we have. <laughs> <in England. laughs> so so uh, it's, it's a brilliant idea anyway, of course. And uh, we know what the insurance situation is like in Nigeria. I mean, you know, uh, we don't have a lot of uptake insurance because of situations such as these. People do not have confidence in exactly. the system and the process because of doubt. And uh, because, you know, so this actually eliminates that aspects of uh, fake insurance policies that are being generated or so and so immediately once you get your policies you can easily verify it if it's original and if it's fake you would know immediately or so and you can report that mm. so it's a good initiative and then uh, we just hope that they can keep on improving on this all right thank you very much uh, yinka sent in a message it says we need to be careful uh, on the issue of the police redeployment there has been some issues surrounding the tenure of the current ig some have argued that the inspector general of police that uh, should remain, but the point is, as long as there is a system in place, anybody can be moved at any time, and it's the prerogative of the Nigerian police force as well. I think going forward, uh, petitions should be uh, submitted earlier, uh, he continues. I can't even find those ARDI guys who filed the petition uh, a while back, or since Friday. According to some people, uh, to retire the Inspector General of Police before an election may cause issues, but strangely, uh, putting the CGN on trial at the speed of light uh, before the same elections has no effect. There's a, a son, a senior advocate of Nigeria, and a person of BRF, and a professor of law in uh, this federal government. Couldn't we have advised them otherwise? Do your investigations and refer to the case uh, of the NJC. I'll refer the case to the NJC. That's what Yinka is Don't worry, is it'll suggesting. have an effect. You just won't see the underground movement of said effect. <laughs> Uh, this one says uh, from uh, Rashid from Rashidi who says new headlines. Good morning. Please, states police commissioners are routinely de uh, redeployed before general elections and returned after. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Papi K says, uh, depending on who's watching, all men get half skeletons. But really, I think the CJN should attend the summons and shut down this political uh, people, even for the administration. This is the law, law of the laws. He's on the beacon of the judiciary. He's the beacon of the judiciary. He should uphold the law and set a good example. Thank you very much, Lagos. Uh, unfortunately, that's the much we can take on the messages. Well, special thanks to Lola uh, for gracing our new year in a very grand style. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Find her up on socials at Lola Jewelry. And uh, special thanks to Bola at Mr. G Quest. Lagos, coming up next, uh, Man U fans, are you ready? <laughs> Tottenham. We talk sports inside of the locker room. Good morning. Mm -hmm.